victory here on a Monday night for Michigan basketball over LSU and Michigan advances to the Sweet 16 for the fourth straight season an 86 to 78 victory over the LSU Tigers who all the scribes and the pundits and the gamblers all wanted to call it was going to beat Michigan and upset another number one seed from the Big Ten here on the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament but I want you guys to know now to tell me, as Michigan fans, what is your one-word reaction to Michigan's victory over LSU here on Monday night to advance to their fourth straight Sweet 16? Go down in the comments and let me know what your one-word reaction is to this, frankly, big-time victory. And I'm just going to say this. This is my one-word reaction. I just exhaled. I was jumping around all game. I was running all over the place. Every bucket, every foul. Every miss basket, every steal, every assist, every rebound, I was on edge, and I'm sure you were too. LSU got it hot, I got it hot, and Michigan stayed with them and kind of handled the barrage early to have a barrage their own late, get the momentum before halftime outside of a bucket right there before the half by LSU and take that lead in the second half, although LSU did have a nice run there to start it, and then Michigan was in control the last 10 minutes of the second half. Now, as you see on the screen, Michigan has now been to four straight Sweet 16s, which puts them with a handful of teams as the only ones in the country to be to four straight Sweet 16s, 2017, 18, 19, and now 2021 with no tournament in 2020. 2018 team, we all remember, went to the national championship game and lost to Villanova. But it is the Michigan basketball Report. All of us, the Michigan Football Report. We're bringing you Michigan basketball news here on Newsbreak from Chat Sports. Thank you for tuning in. We are going to take you through this game how Michigan advances to their fourth straight Sweet 16 with Jawan Howard in his first weekend coaching in the NCAA tournament. His second game, he is now 2 0, which, as far as I know, is the best record in NCAA history, right? He's undefeated 2 and 0. Michigan was down early, they were down eight points. In three different occasions, I'm talking about three different occasions, meaning that they were up, they were down eight, they fought back to three or four or five points, and then all of a sudden it was eight again in three different points in the first half, but then went on a little run of their own, fueled by Eli Brooks and some others, and actually had the lead 43-40, which is a few seconds left before LSU drained a last-second jumper. And I will tell you this, Jawan Howard, for me, was impressive in this game. Why was he impressive? He brought what I thought maybe Jim Harbaugh would bring to the Michigan football program, Juwan brought to the athletic program. He brought strategy, and he brought calmness. It was very clear that Juwan was very calm, and he had a plan and a strategy for this Michigan basketball team, even though LSU piled it on. I kind of equated it at halftime of the game. I, uh, I thought to myself, this is like the movie Rocky, where you're going against Apollo Creed, you're going against the Russian, and they just come out blazing with punches. That's what LSU felt like early on, and they look super impressive the first 10 or 12 minutes of this game. Juwan calmed everybody down. He kept things cool and collective, and Michigan was able to go on a run the end of the first half and then end up with a lead. Although they fell down behind the second half, they ended up going up 10 or so, Late in the second half, eight, six, eight minutes left, and held that lead on throughout the rest of the game. Frankly, the first last final two or three minutes was just a formality. LSU's Cam Thomas, though, he was a story early on. He had 19 points at halftime. At one point, I documented, he had 15 of LSU's first 30 points, 17, I think, of the first 36, and 19 of the 43 points they had at halftime. Michigan held him in check in the second half. He ended up with 30 points to the night, only 11 in the second half. So good job of holding them, holding him at least, to not in another explosive half in the second. Last year, he was a five-star. He was one of the best uh, seniors in this country. First first you know, tournament weekend for him, true freshman. If he goes pro, hope he does well. If he comes back, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with next season in college basketball. But we'll see what happens with that. Eli Brooks, though, he was a story of the first half for Michigan. Five three-pointers on the day, 21 points for LSU. He is my player of the game for the Michigan Wolverines, although Franz Wagner did have a really strong last 12 to 14 minutes of the game, despite being absolutely invisible in the first half of the game. Wagner came on 
very strong late. But Eli Brooks was consistent throughout the game. And frankly, he is a nice welcome addition to this Michigan offense without Isaiah Levers. As I said earlier, Isaiah's Cam, or LSU's, Isaiah's, LSU's Cam Thomas finished with 30 points in the game, 19 in the first half, 11 in the second half. The big difference between Michigan getting potentially behind too much and end up losing the game and end up winning the game was they held Cam Thomas in check in the first one, six, seven minutes of the first half, and that was the difference maker, in my opinion, in this game. Allowed Michigan to get back into it after LSU jumped out to a quick second-half lead, and then Michigan took the lead and continued on through the rest of the game. Follow us on news break, though. If you haven't yet, Chat Sports is bringing you Michigan football and basketball news and rumors on the News Break app. So make sure when you're on the News Break app, follow us, hit that follow button. You get every video that we have on News Break, sometimes exclusive videos here on News Break, and you won't miss a single one because you're following, and we'll show up right in your following feed. So make sure while you're here, follow that, uh, follow the channel, hit that follow button, and you won't miss a single video from Chat Sports' Michigan Football Report with your boy, James Yoder. Now, my takeaways here, a couple of them. LSU threw some haymakers early. They came out looking like an athletic juggernaut. And the way the pace of the game was going on early on, I was kind of nervous, scared. I don't know what to tell you with like the words I was feeling, but I think you were feeling it too if you watched the game, is that, holy shit, this, this status, this pace, this environment – Michigan can't keep up with this if it keeps on this way. But that only lasted for about eight or ten minutes. Then Michigan got into it, kind of calmed themselves down. Jawan Howard, very impressive, and making sure that he put his players in the right positions, called the right plays, took some of the NBA experience from a coaching perspective, you know, coaching uh, you know, almost a full decade with the Miami Heat, and put it into play here for the Michigan Wolverines basketball team. Now 2-0 in this tournament and will advance to the Sweet 16. So very impressive by Juwan Howard after LSU throws the haymakers early. But how about this stat? Michigan ended up shooting 54% on the night. LSU only 39%. And at halftime, it was similar numbers, yet Michigan was only up one because of turnovers. Michigan had quite a few turnovers, like 4-5 or five in the first half to LSU 0 And the story was the same throughout this second half. I want to actually look at that exact number here for you. Total turnovers in the day, how about this stat? 12 turnovers for Michigan, only three for LSU, and zero in the first half. So that's the difference. Nine turnover difference, 12 for Michigan, three for LSU, is why Michigan can shoot 54%, LSU only 39. And frankly, eight-point game and a shot or two here or there for LSU, it could have been a much closer game down the stretch for Michigan in this round of 32 matchup to advance the Sweet 16 coming up on Sunday. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Another stat, Michigan had a 22-8 to assist advantage. They had all the passes, all the assists early on, and I didn't necessarily track it half to half, but Michigan definitely stayed in the game in the first half by passing the ball. They dumped the ball into Franz Wagner. They were dumping the ball into Hunter Dickinson. And one of those two players would then kick the ball out to another wing player who then himself would pump fake and kick the ball out to another player who, if he was open, he'd take the shot. If he wasn't open, he'd pass it again or pump fake, drive in, and have a potentially open shot or potentially kick it back out. And that's the offense that John Beeline ran at Michigan. And frankly, that's the offense that the Miami Heat have run for the last decade. That's the offense the Golden State Warriors have run. And that's the offense that Juwan Howard is bringing to the table for the Michigan Wolverines. And frankly, you know, the 22-8 uh, assist advantage is testament to how this team works together and how Juwan Howard has brought the NBA style of offense to Michigan basketball. Although, John Beeline did a phenomenal job with it too. He is one of the great offensive innovators in the history of college basketball. Next up, my thought, the refs were so terrible. I was shaking several times throughout the game where there was a call, either Michigan got hacked or an LSU player got a foul called while they were going up for a shot or a pass and a foul was called in Michigan. But they called it and it was just such a bad call. And I think everyone who was unbiased, who wasn't an LSU or anti-Michigan fan would agree with me. The refs were very, very bad in this game. I think it's something the NCAA needs to work on because it's so obvious sometimes. There's one play where there was a loose ball rebound. I can't remember what it was, but the announcers on TV talked about a ref from across the field, across the, the court, made a call for a foul against Michigan when the two refs on the baseline and the sideline closest to the ball made no such call. And that's just unacceptable to me as a fan and to 
uh, your host here analyzing this game here on the Michigan Football and Basketball Report here from Chat Sports. Next up, though, Michigan now has six days off. Well, I guess five days off, six days off, however you want to take it. They won't play again until Sunday. Michigan will take on Florida State, who beat Colorado tonight uh, in in the, the round of 32. In, in I guess it's a it's a another it's another uh, matchup for the Wolverines against Florida State. They've played multiple times in the past in this NCAA tournament, and now they'll play again uh, coming up on Sunday. So Michigan, Florida State coming on, up on Sunday. Time is to be determined. So the number one seed Wolverines versus the number four seed. Florida State Seminoles. That is the next matchup. They were victorious tonight. Uh, I want to grab you the score here. They were victorious 71-53 versus Colorado. And as you see across the bottom of your screen now, that game will take place on Sunday. So it's a different NCAA tournament this year. Uh, I don't know why they made the decision, but it's okay. It feels normal. I actually kind of like games on Monday and Monday night. Um, there'll be games Saturday, and then there'll be games Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday before we lead up to the Final Four a week from Saturday and in two weeks from tonight is the national championship game. So Michigan, Florida State coming up a week from, uh, I'm sorry, in six days on Sunday. Time to be determined, but you know you'll find out here from Michigan football and basketball report from Chat Sports and your host, me, James Yoder.